Welcome to Seeing China, Photographic Views and Viewpoints. I'm Howard Boston, Professor of Photography and Visual Communication at the School of Journalism and Adjunct Curator at the Michigan State University Museum. The exhibition explores the tremendous change in China over the last 15 years. We're talking about China ascendant 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and it's still, you know, expanding and, and changing rapidly. So that's really what was underneath, uh, or the, the reason for my going over and attempting to do this, and attempting to tell a story that I wasn't, I wasn't seeing being told yet. I had been working panoramically for some time, but I think this is the first time that the, my method of working and the subject really fit together, because um, it's a really big story, and I don't mean to be a simpleton, but these are really you know, large pictures with um, huge amounts of detail and information in them. I don't know if you know what Cuentos Chino is. In Spanish, it's actually a tall tale. It's a big fib. The use of the negative images. Uh, China, as you well know, is down there on the other side of the earth. So that's why I reversed the image. It's so often the case that when you are familiar with your surroundings, too familiar with surroundings, you stop noticing. By the end of this trip, my, my guide actually told me, he said, thank you for showing me China in a way I could never have seen it, which I thought was wonderful, and, but also pointed out to me that I'm completely oblivious to stuff in my own country. Message is not a real obvious, it's more you have to create your own answer to the, to the message. As always, I just hope that they get a giggle and a good laugh and, and enjoy, the, enjoy the visual. An exhibition like Seeing China is a large project that involves many people. You're going to be hearing from Marissa Hamill and Jordan Jennings, who are going to talk about the role that they played in the creation of this wonderful exhibition. Hello, I'm Jordan Jennings. And I'm Marissa Hamill. And we're going to give you a brief overview of the Seeing China Gallery. First, you see Philip Ritterman's photographs on the back wall. He photographs along the Emperor's River, which is along the Grand Canal. And this runs over a thousand miles between Beijing and Hangzhou. His technique uses many exposures per image, which creates these enormous composite photographs. As you can see, at the foreground, Luis Delgado's accordion fold photographs are very contemporary images, and they're actually negatives, which he thinks adds humor to the project. Here you see Laurie Lambrecht, who chose to photograph China in a more traditional way, as we as Westerners may perceive it. You see the Imperial Palace Gardens, and on the reverse side of the wall, Brad Temkin has chosen to photograph the Great Wall. Below, you see stereographs. Professor Boston, who is the lead curator, as well as the history curator, Shirley Vida, went through 20,000 of these to come up with 350 that were relevant to China, and of those, 22 are in the museum. Here you see Stephen Benson's social documentary, of black and white photographs which follow the Three Gorges Dam Water Project. This project was implemented by the Chinese government and it buried 13 cities and thousands of villages across China, displacing 2 million people and disrupting the lives of 30 million more. Benson photographed along the Yangtze in 1999. Here is Frederick Marsh's work which, similar to Philip Ritterman's, is also very colorful and shows modern China. As you can see, there's a lot of neon colors, a little bit of gritty post-processing, and he explores everything from back streets to urban cities. We feel that this project is important because it blends different photographic styles to illustrate the dynamic timeline of environmental as well as social changes in modern China. It's up to the viewer to reflect on these changes and consider the effects of modernization and industrialization on workers' and families' daily lives. Our involvement started at the beginning of last spring semester, continuing on through summer and all of this year. One of the first things we did was to help select and sequence photographs for the exhibition. We based this on geography, aesthetic appeal, message, and perspective. For example, Benson's photographs are laid out going from point A to point B along the Yangtze River as he traveled to photograph, while marshes show the modernization of the city of Guangzhou by starting with a picture of a decrepit alleyway and ending with a clean street view of a high-end department store. This is the gallery's original architectural footprint. 
and you would enter at the top left and continue on. Here is Jordan's original sketch of Benson's wall, where you can see we sequenced the photographs. We then sent this to um, exhibition manager Teresa Goforth, who made a computer-generated version. And there's the finished product. We also created contextual information about the environmental and social histories of the areas photographed. Here, we had read Benson's book, The Cost of Power in China, to create visual clarification in this artist statement. These are where his photographs were taken along the Yangtze River. And then we sent this drawing to Kelly Hansen, the museum's graphic designer, who put it in his artist statement on the wall. We also calculated photograph dimension to determine space allocation and ordering in the gallery as well as total number of images, shipping, and packaging costs. Throughout the semester, we met with photographers Philip Ritterman, Luis Delgado, and Stephen Benson as they came to campus to give lecture series. Publicity for the project included writing press releases and articles to inform the public, not only locally but on an international scale too. Jordan and I wrote an article that was published by Art Daily, the premier website for international art news, and that features Jordan's photograph. This reached a major international audience. In conclusion, we learned what it takes to start with a rudimentary idea and to turn it into a complex professional museum gallery. We saw how each team member is extremely unique. We also observed how much detailed attention it takes to budget, how to create a project that ultimately interests international audiences. We're extremely excited to be a part of this incredible project and we hope you get a chance to see it at the MSU Museum. Thank you.